morning afternoon whatever it is <laughs> uh it's beautiful in the greenhouse is what it is so i thought i would give you an update um we just had negative 31 degrees celsius or no it was negative 32 or 33 something like that uh degrees celsius weather and my little thermometer that i have in here that um i put it in like the coldest spot of the greenhouse um it's synced up with my phone it actually sent me an alarm that it was negative seven degrees celsius in here so yesterday morning it was negative seven degrees celsius in here i did have my plants covered and the furnace was running um and i didn't open it up till today so i did not come in here at all yesterday to assess anything i just left it alone um i wanted to give it time to die back if it was going to die back from the frost and i'm going to show you what the results are here it might surprise you. I'm cringing a little bit, but I'll show you what happened, what went wrong. Did lose some stuff and I'll show you what I did lose. But over here by the door is where I have this hanging next to my water tank, which the water tank actually is full. So it actually heats, it produces heat in here. But as you can tell, like I have icicles growing in here. Like it's there's ice cold. Um, what I, what happened is I was moving stuff around when I was covering and, um, I accidentally forgot to recover this hole. So there's a hole here that we bring the co the cords through from the outside. I forgot to put, um, something in the hole and the result of that was it cooked? <laughs> it totally froze my, froze these guys on this side. I only lost some of the kale. This is flower and kale. Some of it did get damaged, but um, only part of it was damaged. It'll grow a lot of it, but you can see it was just kissed from some of it. And then stuff over here, further away from that draft, they're all perfectly fine. So I'm happy. Like this one's done, but this one next to it is fine. And this one's fine. It's just wherever that draft was coming from right there. I like my snapdragons, they're doing great. These are the cherry twist. There's a few of them that are droopy, but I think they just need water. They're doing great. Bunny tails are doing good. Honeywort is doing good. Snapdragons over here, check this out. Yarrow is like, yep, this is my jam. I like it cold. It's doing great. So, so I'm happy with it. I think it could have been much, much, much worse. And um, yeah, I wasn't gonna lose any sleep over it because if I don't try, I don't know if it's gonna work. So today's experiment, I'm actually going to take some of these and I'm gonna plant some sweet peas in them because I don't really have any place inside to plant sweet peas, but I need an extra bit of filler for my cut flower farm. So I'm going to plant some sweet pea seeds that I have soaking in the house in these pots so they'll hang over. I have seen hanging baskets with sweet peas in them and they're beautiful. So if I once I'm done using them, um, for my cut flowers for early spring cut flowers for my florist then I can you know maybe make my house pretty the front of my house pretty by hanging these up there as um, something decorative I'm always one for functional I'm never one for like putting stuff out there for making things beautiful um, I'm like oh wasting space I need to I could plant so and so vegetable here for <laughs> making this and you know I never want to waste space but this might be a good excuse and I did not lose the ranunculus, um, they're still doing pretty good. A few of them are floppy, but for the most part, they're doing good. So I have these guys, they've been soaking for, this will be the second day. <laughs> I forgot about them yesterday and it was so cold. I didn't want to open this greenhouse up, but, um, oh, we have a visitor. Hey, Reggie, you can't come in here. No, baby. Um, so we have, this one's called Pearl Mix. And this one is called, 
elegant ladies. And uh, so I think there's quite a few. I thought I could do one, like one basket for each seed, but I think I'm gonna need two baskets for each, each seed, even though they're old um, seeds. I'm gonna do, I'll do four completely new baskets. So what I did is um, I didn't clean them out last year and they're quite dry. I did like fill them with water. So there's lots of moisture in here, um, but there was ladybugs living in here. So I didn't, I didn't want to get rid of them. Like I didn't want to dump the soil out or anything. So I left them, but I am gonna just pull the old plants out. Molly, come on, come over here, come here. I'm just going to toss these to the back side. Um, so I'm using that back side as mulch. Uh, anything that had ladybugs in it, I'm just kind of putting it to the edge so that they can um, break dormancy and hatch, whatever they want to do without me um, putting too much stress on them. I'm sure I'm still going to lose some of them, but that's my solution. I'm going to cut back anything and just kind of put it to the side um, without disturbing it so much so that they can repopulate. So what I'm doing is I basically, I'm just filling it up with water. Well, that's not ideal. This is non-chlorinated water. It's been sitting with the lid off for several days now. So there's no chlorine in here. It's also structured water, so um, it should not affect any of the microbiome that I'm applying in here. So I'm putting a lot of water, like a lot, really getting it hydrated. As you can see, it's bubbling. There's lots of, it needs water so bad. And then I'm adding worm castings. <laughs> I'm gonna go get more. So I purchased these worm castings. This is a uh, one yard bag of castings that comes in like a mini bag. And I purchased it from Annalita, which is a um, composting company in Nisku, which is near Edmonton. And it's actually right by the airport over there, someplace for the Edmonton National, um, Edmonton Airport. Um, anyway. This company is really um, focused on regenerative agriculture. So these worm castings, what they do at this company is they collect um, waste from like vegetables, produce, and coffee grounds from surrounding uh, grocers like Walmart, and they collect their produce, the stuff that would be thrown away, and they bring it back to their facility and they feed it to the worms. So um, they do sort through the composting, like they sometimes they'll go through and sort out any citrus or anything that the worms are, that's not good for the worms or for the compost itself, for the microbes in, in, the, in here itself. And so what they do is they have um, people there that work there that they're looking at the microbes in the soil. They're looking for protozoa. They're looking for nematodes They're making sure that the soil the compost is 
um, compatible with regenerative egg um, standards, and that's it's a really wonderful company, and I'm I'm really looking forward to. You. I'm really looking forward to working with them in the future and using trying different products besides just the castings. So the castings for this whole bag, it's big. <laughs> um, it is a it is a yard one yard bag of worm castings, and it was seven hundred dollars Canadian. So. Um, they have other products as well I'm going to be looking into. So if I'm putting in raised beds or doing my beds again, there are some options that I'm looking at. Um, and they have like um, liquid options. So um, they have like a one specifically that is used by flower farmers and homesteader kind of people that um, are growing their own food or growing large crops for market gardens and so it, there's a lot of really great options that they have so if you have if you are in canada i do know that they have their product all over but if you are in canada you might want to check it out they are um they're across the country they do have suppliers so yeah i'll link it in the description below it's a great company and I'm really excited to work with them, so check them out. Yeah, by the way, I wanted to mention that last year's brassicas, I used their products to plant into along with my potato fertilizer that I made, and I had a bumper crop and zero bug damage. It was beautiful. Um, the immune system of the plants, they were healthy, healthy plants, and um, so... You could tell wherever I didn't use this product because I had hollow stems, which was a sign of a deficiency of different nutrients in the soil. So um, wherever I used this stuff in a blend and used my uh, methods of boosting the plant's immune system, I had really good luck with my crop and I also did have no pest damage. So just something to consider. What are you doing? Hey, Max. Okay, so I'm gonna just put in just some soil on top, just so we don't have straight on worm castings on the top. This stuff helps with moisture too. Well, worm castings help with, helps with moisture as well, but this is just what I'm doing. Probably not right or perfect, but it's getting the job done. All right, so I'm just gonna kinda level it out. And I'll plant into, the, into them. And then I'll just come with a watering can and water after. And I'm thinking I'm gonna hang them up on that side because it's really more heat is on that side I don't know it's pretty warm on this side too but we'll see I think this side might be easier for me to reach it so let's start with the elegant ladies and you can see they're already sprouting inside the jar I don't know how well you can see that in there you see down in there we have some sprouts yeah, there's quite a few sprouts. Um, so I think what I'll do is I will split them in half and just fill this up with two of them up with these sweet peas seeds of this kind. And we'll do the same with the other one. So there they are. You can see the sprout. That guinea is going to drive me crazy. Thank you. Usually if I say thank you for warning us, then they'll shut up. I've been doing that since they were babies. Seems to do the trick. Anyway, um, yeah, I think I'm gonna go. Whoop, I just dropped one. <laughs> so yeah, I'll split it in two and we'll go from there.
do the same over here. I changed my mind of where I wanted to put these. I'm not gonna hang them up right now. Um, I actually decided to put them over on the ground in front of the heater. I'll turn this around and show you um, why I did that. So there's my furnace there, and the sun really does beat down here um, early in the morning. Typically, right now, um, it's kind of not in alignment, but when the sun is over there, it really beats down right here. And I think that that would be perfect because it does get cool at night, and I think that the sweet peas would really like it here to get them germinating quickly. Um, if I put it up high, I'm gonna have a hard time reaching it because I'm really short and that's a long ways up. And on this side, it's it stays way cooler than it would over here. So ideally that would be the best place. I just seen that this is super exciting. These were the January planted ranunculus. They're coming up today. I'm so excited. Oh my goodness. January planted. I need to water this, it's really dry. January planted ranunculus under heat cables on a thermostat, under four sheets of row cover, and they're germinating. And I hardly used any power. Actually, the month that I um, had the heat cables going in here, our power bill was lower than what it has been in other months because I have been well, using less electricity, I guess. And it was so cold that our um, deep freezes didn't run as much. Hmm. So the reason I'm super excited about those ranunculus corms that were planted in January, it is because um, when you transplant out starts in the spring, like the ones that I just transplanted out here the other day, the like the greens, they will die back and then you're set back like sometimes up to three weeks before you get blooms. What I wanted to do was do a fall planting so I could have three weeks sooner um, having, having cut stems three weeks sooner. So I'll just show you here. So these guys were started inside and even though they're okay, they're stressed out. So they will likely um, die back some of their foliage some of them are, are just fine, but some of them will die back and push new growth, which is good. Um, but these guys, they are already established, they're rooted, and now they are pushing new growth. Um, and I would suspect they're gonna be flowering much sooner than those ones. So I'm really, really excited about this succession um, working with these cables because it didn't cost me very much money. Um, it did, I would guess it probably cost me $20 in extra electric to have this um, going in, the, in, in January. So my fake out, um, it's like a fake out fall, fall planting. And I didn't have to use any grow shelf space. So that frees up me to be able to start other things that, um, you know, more fillers that I can get started or maybe I could focus on the finicky things like doing more, having more shelf space for my Lysianthus and such stuff that I don't like to move around too much, stuff that needs that shelf space and extra, extra time um, to get going. So, you know, it, it's, it's really exciting knowing that this is now an option. Same with the anemones. I see they're sprouting there too. They don't look, they don't look great, but they're coming up. Um, and that makes me excited because we had 40 below Celsius and the heat cables were, were not working. And it, 
it in the structure um i have two you know it's a it's a dual layer structure and each like this inside of this building if it's minus 20 outside it is what's what's the temperature outside well we'll just go look so inside it's plus 20 right now i had this kind of tucked in the leaves like this so i could keep an eye on my ranunculus which that's too hot this is the point where ranunculus will stop growing so i need to watch that and start venting my greenhouse here if that persists According to the weather app, it's minus seven degree, 17 degrees Celsius outside. As you can tell, the furnace is not running. It has not ran at all since I've been out here. It was running at about eight o'clock this morning and then it stopped running. So I may have to vent. I'm kind of worried. That means, I'll show you what that means. So we have this meter here and I have it set. I think I have it kind of just about off but it will kick on and suck all of the air out through that fan. Um, it'll suck all of the humidity out. It keeps the check on the humidity and keeps it cooler in here to regulate the temperatures. And since I just watered, that humidity is gonna increase. So I have some seeds starting to do in the house. Um, let's go look at the list and see what we should be starting right now. So I have a schedule of what seeds need to be started by what date. And um, so I've, I've have a bunch of seeds that need, I've started for this. I'm not starting any more seeds for the inside of the greenhouse. Now I'm beginning my seeds starting for the external outside of the greenhouse, that part of the farm for cut flowers and vegetables as well for our homestead garden. So um, I'm not growing a lot for the homestead garden this year and I'm gonna give you some insight to why this flower farm and where I'm going to be doing my homestead gardening is not going to be at this property. We're moving it this year. So this fall, um, all, all of this structure, the plan is right now is all of this structure is to be moving to a different location. And you'll get to learn more about that in the future, but it will be moved out of this area. So I don't want to put too much um, time, like to put too much work into growing foods that I can't preserve up and I have lots still to get through. Um, so this year I'm kind of taking a break on the full fledged homestead garden, but I am still going to be growing some convenience foods that we will be um, utilizing throughout the year just to be eating and consuming during, you know, when we're home cooking and, and doing the stuff. And also because we're going to be on the road a lot this year um, with baseball, um, I will be, you know, able to pack homegrown nutritious food and I would like to share with you going into the garden, grabbing these things, making things for the road and, you know, how we're doing it as a lifestyle as well as, you know, a flower farm, homestead and parents, right? Like parents, a family. So um, I know lots of you, <laughs> lots of you get stuck in that trap of the convenience factor. And um, I can tell you going into your backyard and shopping, shopping the aisles of your garden, is there's nothing more convenience, convenient because you don't need your bank card. <laughs> Anyways, let's go in. I'm going to leave these sunglasses out here, but let's go in and let's look at some seed starting schedules. By the way, my Jolly Farmer shipment um, is coming. It's on the way today, actually. It should be here tomorrow morning and I'll be picking it up. So well, probably won't be in this vlog, but um, you should see an unboxing video coming soon. Okay, so we're going to look in my journal and we're going to take a look and see what we have for March. So what I do in my journal is I actually will write in the weeks from my last frost date. So my last frost date, estimated frost date is May 25th. And so the way I work it is um, if I'm wanting to put cool flowers in, I just pick a target date. So my target date would likely be six weeks before my last frost date for cool hardy annuals. So if you follow Lisa Mason Ziegler, she often suggests like five to six weeks or no, sorry, six to eight weeks before your last frost date. For here, it's more realistic to be five to six weeks because we're just so cold. Um, sometimes it's four to six weeks in that window just because some of the stuff like straw flower does not does not do well. Um, it is a cool flower, but not for our climate. Um, it can handle moderately cool, but not like us. We're, we're extreme here. So um, what I do is I pick a target date and then I go count back. So 
um, if my planting, these numbers are based on my frost date. So if I was going to be doing um, cool season annuals and following Lisa Mason Ziegler method, I would go um, probably six weeks, six to eight weeks from my May 25th date. So I count back and then I would do my seed starting um, from there. I would go, um, I would apply this date and plug it all in that way. So I'll explain that more here in a second. So basically this week, we're at our two, 12 week window for my, for my um, zone. Now my zone is a zone 2B. My last frost date estimate is again, May 25th, which is pretty common for many of you that are following. So you could, you know, maybe want to go grab a pen and I already have the work done. So just grab a pen and your notebook and um, you can kind of cheat off of me for flowers. Um, I think most of you already know how to know how to count back for your vegetables, but some of you are getting into flowers. So this may be helpful. So because we are, um, we're, we're, you know, 12 weeks this week, we can still start Lysianthus. I can still start Lysianthus to grow outside, um, because we're 12 weeks, we're in that 12 week window of our last frost date here outside. So, um, if I was planning to put the, my target date was six weeks before our last frost date for a cool hardy annual, then I would, you know, bump it up. So it would be too late to start Lysianthus to meet that requirement, but it is still, um, I could today, I could still start Lysianthus to sow for a regular standard garden that would be probably have blooms for fall. Um, and I might have to put protection over them in the fall to get a nice season out of them. But that's just something to, to note. So if you have a frost date that is May 25th, the week of May 25th, um, this will apply to you. So Lysianthus, eucalyptus is another one. Delphinium, delphinium is a great one to start right now. Verbena, so this, this is the one, I grew a lot of this last year and it was really good. Um, and foxglove, so foxglove is one um, I haven't started yet. I've already started my eucalyptus, my Lysianthus has already started. And um, so I, and the verbena, I might start some today. I'm not sure if I will or not. I think I might, cause my florist really, really enjoyed having the verbena. So I think I need to get to work. <laughs> um, I'm not gonna do a seed starting video because there's so many of them. And I honestly just wanna get to it and not worry about videoing and positioning you and forgetting what I'm doing. I just wanna get done today. Um, and I'm pretty sure that you guys would appreciate that. Um, maybe, maybe you need to go hustle and get some of your seeds. Cause I mean, today, if you're, if you're at your 12 week schedule, I'd hate to tell you, you, you know, you got to go get your eucalyptus started today. You got to get your delphinium started today. You have to get your verbena and foxglove. So, you know, this is the March 3rd week. I think it's the seventh today or something. And um, so we're running out of days to get all that done. Um, you know, spring is here. I mean, we're 12 weeks away from our last frost date. That's exciting for me. And I'm, I'm really looking forward to all the cut flowers and all the pretty things. But anyway, I need to get to work and take my book to my grow room and get some seeds started. So we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.